Welcome back to the creation of my element cube collection, currently consisting of these six cubes. Lead, zinc, yellow brass, copper, tin bronze and pure tin. Walking around the city the other day, I found this disc brake, which I realized is made of some type of cast iron. So let's try to melt it into a cast iron cube for my collection. The first step is to break this into smaller pieces using a big sledgehammer and the strength of my brother. The pieces can be placed in a suitably sized crucible and then carried into our gas furnace. Now it's time to turn on the furnace and our patience, as the cast iron needs a lot of heat to melt compared to the other metals we've been working with previously. Disc brakes are typically made out of grey cast iron, which has a melting point of around 1250 degrees C. This is quite hotter than copper, which needs to be just around 1100 degrees C. But still better than pure iron, which needs to be heated up to more than 1500 degrees C. While waiting, I prepare the sand casting mold for the cube, following the usual process described in previous videos. This really ends up taking longer than expected, so it's time for a little snack while waiting. After about two hours, we start to see the metal softening a bit, but not molding at all. To help the melting process and get rid of some of the oxidized iron, a spoonful of borax is added to the crucible. Finally we feel like the cast iron is up to temperature, so it's lifted up, getting ready to pour. The sand mold pours very well and we only have a small firework while pouring into the bar mold, which apparently still contained a little bit of moisture even after being preheated. My dear girlfriend Lene came by to see the result. The bar is quenched in a bucket of water to cool it down. And after some cool down time, the sand mold is taken inside to take a look at it. It's quite impressive to see it still glowing red hot even though it's been cooling down for more than 10 minutes. It also gets a little dip into the water. Before cutting the spoon off, I give it a little brush off to remove any remaining sand. The cast iron is quite tough, so the hacksaw was put aside and I must bring in the angle grinder. Now there's a good amount of work ahead to get the sides cleaned up. I decided to grind one of the sides to a pretty smooth surface, making it easier to engrave the letters F E afterwards. Inside the cube is sanded to a high grid and then polished a bit to give it a nice shine. The cube now has one polished side, four semi-sanded sides and one untreated rough side, which I also quite like. As I do not have access to a CNC mill anymore, I have had to be creative to find another way of marking the cube, and I have chosen to try out electro etching. I printed out the letters F and E on my label printer and cut them out to be used as a stencil. 
I then sprint a thin layer of clear acrylic spray paint over the letters, which I somehow lost the footage of. And after a few minutes, when the paint is starting to dry, I peel off the letters, leaving a relatively fine mask. Then I connect the positive lead of my power supply to the cube itself and prepare a handful of cotton swabs in a mix of vinegar and a teaspoon of table salt. The negative lead can then be clipped onto the wet cotton swab and then the electro etching can begin. As the cotton swab gets dirty and dries out due to the heat, I change to a fresh one. This is the first time I'm trying electro etching so I go by some intuition for when it seems to be done. After a bit of cleanup with acetone to remove the spray paint and the mess of the electro etching process, it looks quite good to me, even though the letter E didn't come out as crisp as the letter F. Finally, iron can be ticked off the list and added to my growing collection of metal cubes. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you soon.